what's a success story or something that you feel good about? Like there's a couple players that are dear to me that I still talk to them this day. I still, is there anybody that you've seen their growth come through here or, or another school or wherever that went on, whether they went to the NFL, whether they went to college, whether they're a doctor, lawyer, they sell cars. Is there anybody that is close to your heart as a player that you can think of? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of them, you know, and it's whether it was from being a, a position coach, you know, coaching tight ends the first year, or whether it was, you know, being a coordinator with them and, and being involved, but just seeing the progress that they make. Exactly. I mean, you know, a guy like Mitch Tinsley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think yeah. he, he comes in here and he is a is a tryout guy, yeah. walk on, you know, and yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, just a a super hardworking dude, you know, yeah. and and watching the success from growing up, you know, as a guy that played here minimally to being a guy for us, yeah. you know, my first year as an offensive coordinator and seeing that growth uh, just within the course of a season, you know, and and then going to Western Kentucky and killing it and then going Penn to Penn State, State yeah. and killing it. Now he's, you know, playing in the NFL and you've seen all the hard work that those guys put put mm -hmm. in. And I think, you know, every year there's multiple guys like that, yeah. you know, whether it's a, a walk on and, and make it to the league or whether it's just a guy that comes in and uh, maybe comes from a really tough upbringing mm -hmm. and didn't have a lot going on. And then academically it clicks for him and you see him be successful yeah. and graduate. Um, I mean, there's guys that, you know, sometimes, you, you know, as a, as a junior college coach, I mean, there's a lot of players out there that you can recruit. And yeah. A lot of different backgrounds. And um, maybe you find a guy that just like, hey, he needs to get out of that situation. The environment and then they can blossom. And then they get out and they do it the right way here and they're super appreciative and they're over a 3.0 GPA and, you know, doing that thing in the right way. And then yeah. the offers start happening and then all of a sudden, bam, you know, they're playing big time college football. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, that's really the special part of it. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, that's also the part as a coach that keeps you rolling. Yeah. Because it's tough at times, right? But when <laughs> it's tough and there's reward like that, uh -huh. and, and we tell our guys all the time, like, hey, you know, if you do it the right way and you trust the process and you go out and, and, and you're the one getting the offers and, and the only – joy that we get out of it as coaches is, is you helping us win games yeah. and us watching you on TV on Saturdays after we get done playing and coaching at Hutch again. Yeah. You know, you guys are ultimately the ones that are going to move on from here and uh, go to those big time programs and play in front of 75, 80,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the special part that kind of keeps it going every year. Yeah. Um, is just watching the grind that those guys put in, the, the growth that they have, and then getting that, you know, fulfillment as a coach, uh, just knowing, hey, you know, Hutch was able to be a special part of his yeah. journey, you know, and now watching him succeed and whether it's turning the TV on, you know, on draft day and, yeah. and getting the name called or whatnot. I mean, it's it's pretty special. That's cool. I'm going to get personal. Coaching life is hard on everybody. It's – it's your day is full. You're busy. you got the family and kids. How has your, and I've only met her a couple of times, but how has your wife been instrumental in being supportive and helping you see this whirlwind of the world of football? Because it's not a, it's a different world and people don't understand yeah. that. It's not, it's not a regular nine to five. It's, it's different. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be a, a successful coach's wife, mm -hmm. you got to be all in on it, yeah. you know, and, and understand it. And and she is. I mean, Heather's unbelievable when it comes to that. Like, there's never a time where, you know, I, I can't pick up the phone, call her, text her, and just say, hey, I got to get this done. Yeah. Whether it's a recruiting call, whether it's got something to do with the guys in the evenings, whether it's hey, I got a recruiting trip, I got to be gone for two days. Yeah. There's no hesitation, you know. And um, really, I mean – as a coach's wife, that's what to succeed and be successful in your marriage. You got to have that a little bit, you yeah. know, and then, but also knowing times that like, Hey, when I get time to be home, trying to be present when I'm home, yeah, you know, and hey, I get a weekend to where we can go out and do something as a family, mm -hmm. we're doing it or taking a trip in the summer. We're making those, those things special. And so it's a two way street a little bit as yeah. well, where you got to know when to turn it off and on and, mm -hmm. and be able to spend time with the kids and, and the wife. But 
um, she's all in and, and even going through the interview process, like that was kind of, I guess the final question Josh had for me, um, was <laughs> like, all right, Heather, are you in on this? You know, and, uh -huh. and without hesitation, she was, um, she does a great job of, you know, trying to create this environment and culture as well. I mean, um, I think right after we got the job, like one of our first major purchases was buying a camper so she could tailgate and start tailgates going, you know, so we call it the dragon wagon. So we <laughs> really? got a little travel trailer. She hauls it around. I mean, she can back it up better than anybody. What? And, um, I had my experience with backing up a trailer and it wasn't too good. So he's a professional there. Uh, but now we got this, you know, we got this tailgate vibe going yeah. on game day here on campus. And so, um, that thing's grown over the course of the last three, four years. <laughs> Um, and the dragon wagon's been a big part of that, and that was her idea. And um, now we gotta we, get a picture of the dragon wagon. Yeah, we, we take some family vacations in it too, and go, go camping and get away. But um, like, I mean, that's what it was bought for and purchased for, so we could do things like that. And yeah. um, she'll haul it away games, home games, and that's just great. creating that environment. It's been really good getting you know parents involved when they're here to see their their son play, and uh -huh. um, getting them over there and and providing food and. You know, just getting that that social aspect of it before the game is really fun. And um, as coaches, we don't get to enjoy it, you know, no. all too much. But uh, every once in a while, you know, after a good win, she'll keep it open a little bit longer, post game wise. So. Um, my uncle's a coach. He's still a coach. Um, he's a he's in the UFL now. When I was younger, I was living with him. I he was at San Diego State. There was Marshall Fogg, Darnay Scott, Keith Williams. He's a coach now for. He's actually the coach. Or, God, what did he just get the job? Whatever. But I was the net guy. I got to do the nets. <laughs> so as a kid, I loved the fact that my uncle was a coach. Does your kids embrace the fact that dad is the head coach? Dad is a coach? Absolutely. Yeah, like Coop, <laughs> I mean, my son, uh -huh. you know, he's he's 11, about to turn 12 and um, tomorrow, actually. So, oh, really? Yeah. Um, okay. Happy birthday, Coop. There you go, Coop. Probably happy be, birthday, Coop. Be late. Happy birthday. Shout out by the time you watch this. But uh, um, anyways, I like, you know, he'll come to practice after school, too. And Heather, pick him up for school, drop him off, go get Parker, the youngest. And, um, you know, Hayden, my, my oldest daughter, Parker, my youngest. And, uh, they're, they're super involved as well. But Coop spends a lot of time at practice, shagging footballs, yeah. RVA, catching it back and, and helping relay it and being around. And. Uh, it's fun to watch those relationships with the guys, yeah. you know, once they get to know him too. And, mm -hmm. and he enjoys that and his buddies will come around every once in a while as well. And um, But like my daughters, I mean, they're super supportive. They live and die with it. Really? The wins and the losses. I mean, <laughs> Hayden, our oldest, is like, I mean, she, she won't watch the end of a game if it's close. She'll really? be up there and Heather will tell her what's going on. But those close games, I mean, uh, it means a lot to him, you know. Yeah, man. Just... Being a coach's son, I get it too. Yeah, like. Man. Uh, it was super important and like spent a lot of time on the sideline in games. Like back in the day when my dad was coaching, I was the cord boy, you know, like all the oh, headsets yeah, yeah, yeah. had wires on them. So like I was a cord boy, you know, for a little while. <laughs> and then you graduate to being able to be the ball boy and uh -huh. and being around it. And, um, you know, I, I felt a little bit guilty, like Tom Brady, the deflate gate, all that stuff went on. And like, I remember my job was to go around with a needle and take some dang air out of the balls you know, because the quarterbacks would, would prep me on it. So um, I didn't think it was a big deal till I guess he got in trouble for it. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, just being around it and, like, being involved on game day was always pretty special, whether it was pulling a net up or uh -huh. running the cords. I mean, I remember the muddy games and you're running the cords uh -huh. off the headsets. I mean, like, you're covered mud, and, yeah. you know, and just you did it because you had to. And That's cool. Dad needed you to, I guess. Um, I skipped this. You You get the job. It's COVID. COVID, yeah. COVID hits. Yeah. Man, you got to go through whatever protocols it is. Then you got to play a season and you win a national title. Like, what is the roller coaster ride of that? <laughs> is it six months, eight months? Like, I mean, it's, so 15 months, I think, is what it was before I coached my first game. Okay. As a head coach. Yeah. Um, but, like, I mean, you know, I think it was January 1st, 2020 was, you know, first day that COVID was discovered in the United States. It was the first day as my head job, you know, and so like you go through the hiring process, hiring a staff and, um, 
you know, we we were actually kind of in the middle of moving facilities so that the, our facility yeah, could yeah. get renovated. Uh -huh. um, you know, and, and you start getting February around and you're putting spring ball plans together and you have your master calendar and yeah. try to be organized with everything, right? And and that's the biggest thing about being a first-time head coach is just having a plan. Well, that plan went out the window real fast. You know, like our guys go home for spring break and now we're calling them and, hey, you're not coming back. Classes are moved online and, and everything is shut down. And, and so then for the last couple months, you know, you're an academic coordinator via Skype and nobody's ever used Skype and got some guys don't have computers back home and trying to do, you know, Skype academics from their phone. And, um, you know, then you're going through Hey, we're not even allowed in the facilities. And so everybody's, your staff's doing it apart. I mean, I can't tell you how many calendars I went through cause you'd yeah. make a plan and then a week later it changed and then you'd make a new plan and five minutes later it changed. And, yeah. I mean, you just threw them away all the time and, and tried to revamp it. But I think a lot of that stuff went back to perspective. It was like, you know, and the way I looked at it is like, hey, as a first-year head coach, I mean, nobody else has been through this thing either. And yeah, so yeah, we're on a level playing field, you yeah. know. I mean, I knew that, hey, there's veteran coaches that we were going to coach against, and they didn't have an upper leg all of a sudden, you know, mm -hmm. or an upper hand all of a sudden just because nobody had been through – COVID before. Yeah. And so really it was just, and I tell our guys all the time, like, we just got to do it better than anybody else, mm -hmm. you know, and whether that was managing protocols, whether it was managing, you know, just trying to keep the sickness away, uh, the academic side of things, the football side of things. I mean, you just had to try to do it better than anybody else, yeah. you know, and nobody had a, a, a leg up on you. Mm -hmm. So the first year you, I don't know if it's a three pointer or a half court shot, you, <laughs> Boom. It National wasn't a layup. I know as much. So. Um, National championship, man. Like, how How did that – was that a weight off your shoulders? Did you just breathe? Did you – was it surreal? Like, that's huge. You, you enjoyed it. It was definitely surreal. You know, I, I think that wouldn't – you expect to be good, right? You, yeah. You never know how good you can be or, or what's going to shake out. But, um, yeah, that, I mean, I knew we were talented. We had a good crew coming back. Um you know, from the 2019 season, and we had a lot of success that year. And um, we were able to make a couple of additions, develop a good core of young guys, and then you, you're able to spend a little bit more time with them getting prepped because all of a sudden you got sp spring season instead of fall season, yeah. you know. So you're kind of able to grow those guys up. You're able to add a few guys at mid-year that all of a sudden could help you that season yeah. coming up. Um but it was, I mean, it was hard without a doubt. You know, mm -hmm. you just kind of first time going through it and, you know, brand new coordinator. It's a hard conference. And hard, hard conference, you know, and everybody's talented. They mm -hmm. can beat you. So just get them up each and every week. You know, I think when you had the opportunity to finally get out there and play, though, those guys were foaming at the mouth. Yeah. You know, they were ready. And um, managing, like, the recruiting process and then playing a season – was really tough gotcha. because these guys, they didn't know when those offers were going to come, if they were going to come. Because it was all, we're all on new grounds. New grounds. Yeah, and yeah. like, I mean, there was a lot of schools that, hey, I don't, we don't have any spots available in this year's class because we've got those seniors coming back, mm -hmm. you know. And so managing that part of it was unique, difficult, and then still trying to keep that focus on going out and winning ball games and playing well. And um, we knew if we played well every week and, we were going to have a great chance to win. But, I mean, we're playing some really good teams, too, and had some close ones. And mm -hmm. uh, luckily just came out on top. And I think a lot of it went down to just the effort that, that our guys were constantly Gosh. playing. But um, I think winning it that first year is a blessing. It's also a little bit of a curse. Like, um, won an award and, and, you know, a coach that presented it, Hall of Fame baseball coach down Wichita State. Yeah. It's like Gene Stevenson. You know, he told me, he's like, hey, it's only downhill from here, you know, and uh, <laughs> we've been really successful since then. But, I mean, he was right up to this point, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. you know, because you got that pressure to repeat it. And uh, I think once you taste that national championship and that victory and and you get that, that feeling, um, you've been through it, like nothing yeah. else ever really can compete with that, yeah. you know. And um, we're always going to have a goal to win a conference championship, and it's always going to be – enjoyable and a great moment when we do it mm -hmm. um you know but 
playing in that national championship game again and, and then losing it and yeah. then you know getting to the semifinals and uh, having a great football team and then slipping up and, and losing one and getting close again. I mean, that hurts too because you've experienced the success, you know, early in that career. Yeah. And so, um, but the great thing is like a lot of our coaches were part of that as well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for, for coaches to know what it takes and have been through it, uh, I think transitions over to our players, gotcha. you know, like, Hey, you got to put this kind of work in if you want to get that kind of reward, mm -hmm. you know, we've done it. We've, we've tasted it. We've seen it. We know what it takes now. And, um, just holding them accountable and, and trying to do it. Nothing's guaranteed. It's hard to win. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's hard. There's a lot of good football programs, you know, and, um, you got to be great every week because only the top four guys are going to get a shot and, you know, yeah. only the top two are going to get there. So my kind of last question, you got nice weight room, you got turf in the weight room, you got TVs, you got racks. The turf is beautiful. The stadium is beautiful. You got a new Jumbotron. You renovated the office. You got the NFL players jerseys on the wall. You got the trophy case. You got new locker room. But why Hutch? I think it's just the, the brand, man. You know, uh, that's a big part of it is the reason we have all of these things that's top notch in junior college football is because of the people that are around it, you know, and I think, you know, repping it the right way, repping it for the brand of what we stand for and the culture that's been created here. And it's not a culture that's just happened overnight. No. I mean, there's been a lot of blood, sweat and tears and, mm -hmm. and years pouring into this thing. Um, that now when we've got all of these resources to recruit to and and guys can come in and you got history on the walls down yeah. the hallway you can visualize it. you can you can see it yeah it's it, not a it's not like a ghost that people talk about like no it's real yeah, yeah. you know and and it's happening right now and mm -hmm. we're part of it and um there's been so many guys that have come through here and taken that next step to be successful and like even over the course of the last two, three years, I mean, we're averaging over 30 guys a year going on and playing Division One football wow. in each class, you know, and so. And that's just Division One. That's just Division One, okay. And there's, you know, 10 or 12 more probably each year that have gone on and played other levels of four year. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, that's the part of it that just, because we have the setup now and there's, there's so much history behind it, and it's not ancient history. I mean, it, it yeah. wasn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, 20 years ago. It was, I mean, we're kind of in the midst of it mm -hmm. is, is what we like to think. And, and, you know, we've got to the point where that standard now is competing for a national championship every year. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's things along the way that you got to accomplish, you know, you, to have a shot at that. you yeah. got to try to win the Jayhawk. But, I mean, the branding, the brand of Hutch football, you know, the Hutch factory. I, yeah. Mean, yeah. I mean, there's... There's a lot of things that go behind that to get it to where it's at. And I think more than anything, it's just, um, it's established and we got to keep it rolling, you mm -hmm. know, and, and the culture's where we need it to be, where we want it to be, but you still also got to find a ways to keep improving it, right? Gotcha. And, um, that's always the challenge is when, you know, when you have success, how do you improve it? Mm -hmm. um, and that can be tough to do at times, but I think, you know, just being willing to talk about that with our team and our coaching staff of, hey, not being satisfied where we're at, let's find ways to elevate it. And whether it's little things throughout the facility, like hanging the NFL jerseys on the wall or, um, you know, adding, you know, a supplement station or, yeah. or whatever it is, you know, trying to find ways to do those things and incorporate it to elevate it each and every year. And it all goes back to the people that have got it set up and then the community and the support that's kind of continue keeping it rolling. So I'm a, I'm a parent. You want my kid to come to Hutch. What's your, what can you assure me? Your kid's gonna get loved up, man, and developed. You know, I think we pour a lot of time and effort into developing our guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, there's so many guys that come in and you spend the time investing in them as people, not just as football players. Um, you know, our players can attest to that. We spend a lot more time talking about academics and off the field resources. And um, we've started player development series, you know, that have nothing to do with football. Gotcha. And we've had 
NFL alum come in and um, talk, you know, just to our team. And, hey, there's so much more to being a great football player that involves all the other things, you know. And I think um, at the junior college level, sometimes that gets overlooked. At mm -hmm. the four-year level, it gets overlooked. And um, if you want to be great on the football field, you got to do things a certain way in the classroom. You got to do things a certain yeah. way in the community. Otherwise, you're cheating yourself and you're never going to reach your best. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and really, that's our focus, I guess, as coaches is we're going to love our guys up. We're, we're, we're gonna, they're going to know that, you know, but uh, we're going to try to make them the best versions of them, you okay. know, and then the recruiting side of things is going to take care of itself. The wins are going to take care of themselves if – we're recruiting the right guys, yeah. you know, and um, and then investing that time into developing them. So I think more than anything, just how, how we operate it and then like there's a plan behind it. There's a method behind what we do. Uh, you know, it's proven now and um, we just got to keep continuing to build it, elevate it, um, continuing to love these dudes up and mm -hmm. and making sure that, you know, we're trying to put our best foot forward to gotcha. getting them being the best they can be. Gotcha. Last question. Um what, what, where do we go from here? And what is, like, what's your prediction? You just got finished with spring ball yesterday. What's, what's your foresight for next season and the program? And what, what do you, what do you visualize? Well, the, the standard's not going to change, you mm -hmm. know. Um, there'll be new faces out there, but I'm super pleased with where we're at, you know, from a personnel standpoint. You know, there's new defense coordinator, new coaches on staff, and, and they're, um, you know, catching on and holding guys accountable. So super pleased with the pieces of the puzzle that we have, but we still got to put it all together, you know, and, and we'll have a, a host of new guys coming in and we got to get them going, uh, get them caught up to speed, uh, get them to push and compete. But, um, you know, excited for the future, I think, you know, like I said, the standard is not going to change. How we do business is not going to change. We're going to, whether it's a guy that's brand new to the program, there's a certain way of doing business. Yeah. And um, not only is it to be successful here, but try to train them right. to be successful when they move on from here, mm -hmm. you know, and um, be successful in life after they're done playing football, you know. So I, I think we got some great pieces of the puzzle, you know, on the coaching staff, on the football field. It's exciting time of year, kind of when you're going through spring ball, mm -hmm. you know, and then you reflect and and kind of say, hey, here's where we're at. Where do we need to improve? And whether that's developing certain guys you already have on campus, going out and finding new guys to add to it, getting a host of new guys on campus and catching them up to speed, uh, that's always exciting. But uh, you know, the standard's going to be to compete for a national championship next fall and uh, put our best foot forward to do it. You know, whether we do it is. TBD, you know, but uh, <laughs> that's sure as heck going to be the try, and and I think we got the crew here that can do it. That's good. That's good, man. Um, thanks for taking your time out. Thanks for letting us in the the palace and um doing this, and I, I really appreciate it, man. And I just want to say, we appreciate you, the the community, like the the fellas that I know in the community. Everybody loves what you're doing, and. I mean, just keep winning, man. We we support you in special place. You. Yeah, yep. appreciate you coming back and doing it, man. Always <laughs> good to spend time with you and, and what you're doing for the community too. So yeah. it goes a long way, and love having old heads. Yeah, you know, back involved Real in the old program. Heads. You know, so guys that have been here and done it and been yeah. through it. You know, you have that appreciation for it. So yeah. appreciate you on that. Thank you, man. Um, another episode of Life of Times with Tub City, Coach Drew Dallas, Hutchinson Blue Dragons. Want to save your HOA money on your home services while enjoying the benefits of living in a community? PIN Plus, the ultimate platform that brings neighbors together under one powerful concept, power in numbers. Communities can now negotiate group discounted pricing on essential home services, trash, pest control, pool maintenance, and so much more, all at unbeatable rates. Transform your home service experience today. Visit www.mypinplus.com today for more information. All right.